students. We had residential schools that ended in 1996. And yet, child welfare has pretty much taken over from those residential schools. We have more children in child welfare care today that are Indigenous in Canada than at the height of residential schools. Um, our value systems um, were all about our relationships, our relationships to the land, our relationships with one another. That's kind of who we were. We were, we were in balance. Our Indian people were people who were gentle, kind people. As a matter of fact, the, the two people in our, among our Indian people that are, are the most precious are the old, old people and the little children, those two, those two classes of people. They're the best. They're, they're, they're the ones who they, they uh, uh, held in high regard, you see, because they realized that the, the young ones learned from the old ones, and the young ones were the future. Ah. Even discipline coming from that place of unconditional love that we used to have before. Family concept for Indigenous people goes beyond any biological connection that a child has to their parents and it kind of extends to their aunts and their uncles and their grandparents and all that kind of stuff and even cousins are, are considered siblings and, and so we really live by the philosophy that it takes our whole community to raise healthy um, and vibrant adults. Uh, traditionally, a lot of our, uh, in First Nations communities, um, a lot of the teaching and a lot of the um, um, lessons learned uh, was from the family, family structure. And, you know, you didn't hear it, you know, only one time from a, a mother or father. You actually heard the same teaching um, from, you know, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents as well. And so the important things was to be together, to, to uh, have relatives, you see. Residential school policy um, forced families to surrender their children at the age of five, um, right up until the time that they were 15 or 16. They were impacted by trauma on a daily basis, and, and, it, and it could go from emotional trauma to physical trauma or sexual trauma or, or all three, all three types in one day, but every single day for years and years and years and years of your life and then once they reached 15 and 16 they were released back to their communities expected to go back home raise healthy loving nurturing families when they didn't give they weren't given any tools to deal with what happened to them for the past 10 years of their life in these institutions when the indian residential school era uh, began in uh, 1849 here in the country of Canada and for the next hundred years uh, where the young uh, children four, five, six, uh, seven years old were taken away from their families and some actually never had the opportunity to go back to their families, return to their families, even see their families sometimes for ten, up to ten years. My mom took me for an outing in the afternoon, and then I never went back home. And I kept thinking there'd been a terrible mistake made, and somebody's going to come back and collect me up. And when you guys, when my mom and dad find out what you're doing, they're going to be really mad. They seemed to be mean, the strappings that we got. And 
There was one time I said something in, in, in our own language and I had to walk around with a block in my mouth, like this, wide open. And that's, that's the one thing I never forget. And they had a funny kind of cereal there that was, had these little brown things in there or something or other. One of those mush types. I don't know what it was. But I remember uh, throwing it up. Like I couldn't hold it in my stomach. I threw it up and they made me eat it again. And that was gross. In 1951, there was an amendment to the Indian Act that enabled the provincial government to provide child welfare services where none had existed um, federally. Uh, during this time, thousands and thousands of indigenous young people were taken from their homes and placed with uh, non-indigenous families. Many times they were disconnected from their communities, um, their languages, and their culture in essence, um, their identity. To my understanding, what I've been uh, taught from elders and from school itself, uh, basically it was a continuation of residential schools and a way for uh, the Canadian government and uh, child welfare system to weaken Native families uh, and to help with assimilation. It wasn't until the 1980s that the government changed child welfare laws so that bands were able to run their own social services. Um, but unfortunately, the trend and the overrepresentation of Aboriginal young people uh, continued on. In fact, over the past 20 years, there have been multiple um, reports and research done, and um, the sad thing is that the numbers continue to get worse. And I look around and then scale that down to stand up, look around and then scale that down to stand up, look around and then scale that. The importance of culture is um, what gives us a sense of identity and a sense of belonging and it makes us who we are so it's important to connect with it and to know where you come from. In foster care most of the time they get denied their right of the language. I, I speak a lot of English but I can't, I don't know my own language but I do know how to, the art of the drum beat. Traditional language, connection to the land, and ceremony have always been what defined Indigenous people as a group. Incorporating that into the lives of the youth today will help create a movement of Indigenous resiliency. A lot of the youth, like a lot of our elders, are passing away, and a lot of uh, our heritage is going with them. So that's why the youth have got to speak with the elders so they can learn about the past about our culture and stuff, so they, when they get older, they can pass it on to their children, etc, etc, right? So, um, it's good to have culture and, and values like that um, in a family as well. My traditional father actually refers to that component as um, cultural confusion, and we have a lot of our young people involved in that cultural confusion right now. We have a lot of uh, young people out there that don't know their history, don't know their culture, and um, you know, for the longest time there's been nothing to replace 
nothing to help them to replace some of those pieces that they were um, stripped of uh, as they were children. My grandfather always told me that you have to know where you're going, who you're going with, and most important, um, where you come from.